What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic. So we've already talked about home theater audio and a whole bunch of complex stuff about 4K and HDMI. So now it's time to put it all together and build a home theater, so stay tuned. So there's several ways to build a home theater and the budget can range from just a few hundred dollars all the way into the hundreds of thousands. But in this video, I'm gonna focus on a small and moderate budget. And I'll list some example setups in the video description so you can go ahead and check those out to give you an idea of how much you might wanna spend. And if you haven't already, I do recommend that you watch the two videos I did on home theater audio and HDMI since they have a lot of useful information in them that you should know before setting everything up. So first we'll make a list of everything you need. And the first thing you're gonna need is gonna be a projector or TV and there are several budget 4k projectors and TVs out there so you have lots of good options here and if you are buying a projector then you'll need a projector mount but before buying the mount you need to have an idea of exactly how far the projector needs to be from the ceiling so you know exactly which mount to get you're also going to need a projector screen now I do recommend waiting until you get your projector so you can see exactly what size screen you want to do now if you have a really tight budget then you do have the option of painting a wall instead of getting a screen which believe it or not actually does work pretty well. So the next thing on your list is gonna be a home theater receiver. Now you can buy a sound bar, but home theater speakers usually sound better than the average sound bar, especially if you're going with a projector. You also wanna make sure that your receiver has HDMI ports on it, and that those ports do support 4K and the latest version of HDCP, so you don't have any issues with 4K video. So now that you have your home theater receiver, you'll need some speakers. Now speakers are really subjective and everyone has their favorites, but it's best to listen to the speakers yourself to decide exactly what you like. Now, if you're doing a 5.1 setup, then you'll need a center channel speaker, two main speakers, two surround speakers, and a subwoofer. If you're doing 7.1, then you'll need to get two additional surround speakers. And most rooms are fine with one subwoofer, but you can even out the room with a second sub if you need it. So the next thing on your list is gonna be HDMI cables for all of your devices. And if you're using a projector, then you'll also need a long HDMI cable. Now, there's no sense in putting out all this money for this equipment just to let it get taken out from a power surge or a lightning storm, so the next Next thing that I recommend is a good surge protector. Now I do recommend getting one with a good jewel rating or you can even get a power conditioner if your budget allows for it. So next on the list is speaker cables and depending on how powerful your speakers are, you may have to get thicker gauge wire. So I usually recommend 14 gauge, no smaller than 16 gauge wire and a 100 foot spool is usually enough for most rooms. You'll also wanna buy some banana plugs for your speaker wire since they'll make your installation easier and cleaner. You'll also need a subwoofer cable for your sub, but first you need to know exactly where your sub is going, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Another thing you'll need if you're using a projector is a media player if you don't already have one, and that's because unlike a smart TV, most projectors don't have built-in apps for you to play movies. This is gonna be like a Blu-ray player, Fire Stick, Roku, or whatever. Just make sure that it supports 4K if you have a 4K TV or 4K projector. So nobody wants to sit down at a brand new home theater and be forced to use three or four remotes, so the last thing on the list is gonna be a universal remote. Now, of course, you have a bunch of of options for this, but I personally use the Logitech Harmony Hub, which is basically a small hub that sits on top of your TV stand and lets you control everything from your phone or using your voice using the Google Home or the Amazon Echo. You can even get it with a separate remote if you want. Otherwise, you can buy whatever universal remote you want, but I do recommend getting one that lets you set up activities so it'll automatically turn everything on or off with one button. So now that you have everything, you're ready to get started with installation. Now, if you're setting up a projector, then I do recommend that you start with that first. Now, before you mount the projector, it's best to hold it in the place where you think you want it to go so you can easily see what size screen you want, what kind of ceiling mount you need, and how long your HDMI cable needs to be. And to measure your screen, make sure you're measuring diagonally. Now, if your projector has a zoom, then it might be best to set the zoom dial in the middle so you can easily adjust the image to fit the screen perfectly. Now, as far as running the HDMI cable between your projector and your receiver, you can either run it above the ceiling in which you may need professional installation for, or you can run it on the ceiling using the raceway, but it's completely up to you. So once you have your projector mounted, your screen mounted, and your HDMI cable run to your receiver, it's time to get started on wiring up your home theater receiver. So the first thing you'll do is connect the HDMI cable from your projector to the HDMI output on the receiver. Then you'll connect all the other components to the open HDMI ports on the receiver, and I do recommend snapping a pic of the back of the receiver 
so you can see which cables are using what input since you'll need this information later. So now you'll want to position your speakers and run your speaker wires. Now there are several ways to set up your speakers depending on the size and shape of your room, but the center channel should be directly under your screen and the main speaker should be at least six feet apart on the sides of your screen. And as far as your surround speakers, some people like to put their surround speakers up high, but Dolby recommends putting them at or just above ear level. It's really up to you, but just don't be scared to experiment with what you think sounds best. Once you have all your speakers in place, go ahead and use your wire cutters to strip the wires and put your banana plugs on. And your receiver should be labeled to indicate exactly where you plug in each speaker. Just make sure you don't mix up the positive and negative on both ends. Now, when it comes to your subwoofer, if you have more than one place in the room that it can go, then it's best to do what's called the subwoofer crawl. Now there's several YouTube videos for this, but basically you want to put the subwoofer in your seat and play something through the subwoofer. Then you crawl around on the floor where you think the sub might go and whichever place sounds best is where you put the sub. And once you get it in place, you can go ahead and wire up the subwoofer cable between your sub and your receiver. So most subwoofers have at least two knobs on the back of them. One is for the gain and the other is for the crossover. Now I personally would recommend setting your subwoofers crossover around 80 hertz, depending on how big your main speaker are. And I usually set the subwoofer's gain knob around halfway, and you can always raise or lower it later if you need to. So once you have everything all wired up, I recommend that you use a setup mic if your receiver came with one. This is going to let the receiver automatically balance out the speakers for your room. And the last thing you need to do is set up your universal remote if you haven't already. So as I said earlier, setting up a universal remote is going to make it easy for anyone to sit down in your home theater and press one button to turn everything on and press one button to turn everything off. So now that you've got everything Everything set up to your liking, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy a movie. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, as always, go ahead and mash that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.